On this episode of Industry Relations, Rob and I talk about the portal wars and end up down the raise the bar rabbit hole. Let's go. This is Industry Relations, a podcast that's at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Industry Relations with Rob and Greg. This is your co-host, The Notorious Rob, and of course, as always, the fabulous Greg Robertson, everybody. Hello, sir. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Dude, uh, what? I, I'm loving your shirt. What is going on with that? Well, this was this is what was cleaning the closet this morning. So. <laughs> Very festive. Well, I feel know. happy just looking at your shirt. So this is yet my, another my. reminder to our audio-only listeners to come visit us on YouTube oh, yeah. so they could see your fabulous I think shirt. We're, I think we're only 12 subscribers away there you from go. hitting yeah. that magical thousand yeah. um, thing. So I'm, I'm pretty on, stoked about that. Let's do come this. Come on, people. Let's Call do this. Call your friends and family, man. Yeah. Smash that button. Yeah. Smash that subscribe button. Ring that uh, bell. Exactly. All right. So I think uh, we should just begin as we uh, have done the last couple with uh, any updates to the murder board. Well, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll add something to the murder board that will kind of go into our uh, our topic today. And yeah. uh, I think I want to start off with, uh, you know, there's been this kind of thing between, you know, the uh, the <laughs> portal wars. Right. And I've got Realtor.com here. <laughs> And of course, our friends at homes.com. And right. I've been doing I've been doing a little research, Rob, you know, kind okay. of like, you know, putting on a whole thing. And, OK. And, you know, beyond the uh, the attacks or the thing, um, you know, of, of the traffic numbers. Right. Yeah. And um, Del Preeti, you know, Mike Del Preeti, which is a, a consultant, I think we know or we both yes. know, um, has been talking about, you know, wrote an article about this and a couple of interesting things there. He actually calls out saying. Homes.com hasn't been consistent on how they're reporting the numbers. I think they've become inconsistent, but, and that has caused some confusion a little bit there, but, mm -hmm. um, but you know, uh, the numbers are growing. So I don't think there's any arguing about the, the numbers are growing. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, when you spend that much, when you spend a billion dollars, as I talked about, um, you know, you're going to get some effect here. Right. So, but what he talks about in an article uh, he had called portal war Two Twenty Four: traffic is a non zero sum game. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting because he's okay. saying that, you know, basically the traffic that homes.com is generating is not really taking away from Zillow or realtor.com. It's just okay. additive, meaning, okay, okay, if one has 96 million, you know, visitors a month, the other one has, you know, uh, I'm just making numbers of a hundred million, 50 million. Um, and now let's say, you know, Homes.com has got 75 million. It's not like taking 25, you know, 12 million to, uh, away from each one of those. It's just, it's on top of, right? Okay. So that's, that to me is kind of interesting, right? Okay. But, but what he's saying though, is that um, the money you get from agents, that is, that, that is, that is different, right? There's, there's kind of like, you know, th there's only so much money that agents are going to have in their pocketbooks to kind of do that. Now, if we look at the recent Q, the quarterly uh, thing they did, they said- um, Who is they? They is, uh, sorry, homes.com. Okay, yeah. They sold 8,000 homes.com memberships okay. at an average price point of 475 bucks a month. That okay. basically works out to about $5,700 a year, right? Okay. And over 90% of those were on 12 month contracts. So they basically got a shit ton Right, uh, eight, you know, eight thousand. You know, let's call it, you know, seven thousand. But if you do the math, fifty-seven hundred times eight thousand—that's forty-five fucking million dollars, man. Right. Off of agents. Right. Right. So that money has gone to Homes.com. That money has not gone to, you know, Zillow. That money has not gone to Realtor.com. So that, to me, is a very impressive number, especially when you look at, you know, you look at what's happening. So, um, you know, I think they're just really, really executing. And, and Andy is kind of doubling down on it. Everything he's saying here, Andy Florence, mm -hmm. where he's saying that, you know, this, you're listing your lead model. He claims in an article he wrote, he, he, that was in real estate news yesterday called Coast RCO says competitors are going to adopt our model that because of the changes Zillow made and they're like showing time plus listing 
I forget what the hell they call it. Sure. But 12% of their revenue right now is you're listing your lead, meaning enhancing list, listings, right? That type of selling products to the seller, seller's agent, right? Sure. Um, and 48% is basically what, <laughs> I love this term, lead diversion, right? So, um, they're, you know, they're diverting the leads to buyers instead of getting ah. it to directly to the sellers. I mean, he's very colorful in his language. So, I mean, it's it's interesting to kind of see, first of all, I mean, kudos to Zillow. I mean, you know, they had to make an adjustment here. It looks like it's working. I mean, if it's 12% of that money is coming from there, that's 12% that wasn't there before. I don't know if that takes it off it or anything, but um, still, that's just kind of uh, amazing to me. He's also, Andy Florence is doubling down and saying they will never sell buyer leads. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I think it's, you know, there, there's some history here of like uh, Portal saying never, like they'll never become a broker, right? Um, that, that was kind of, a, kind of a famous thing here, but um, it's, it is, it's interesting. It's not just... I guess to me, the portal wars has been the big kind of uh, headline grabbers have been traffic. Realtor doesn't think the homes.com is, is reporting the traffic numbers, right? But there's a whole, there's a lot going on here beyond just um, complaining or bitching or nitpicking traffic numbers. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting year next year and all those kind of things, especially when all this stuff kicks in with, as we talked about in the last couple of things with, the uh, the the friction that this buyer's uh, touring agreement is going to make with with right. Zillow's model. Um, so yeah, I just I just think this is kind of fascinating the way everything. Okay, is so going let me this. ask you this question. Yeah. Okay. Say to bet your house. Okay. My house. Okay. All right. You sell your house. Right, and given you live in uh, Southern California, you know, you get your twenty five million dollars for your house. You know, which <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Which of the three companies would you put the entire amount in for enti- cashing out in ten years? Realtor, Homes, or Zillow? Oh, right. God, man. Um, By the way, we none of us are investment advisors. This is not no, investment no, no, advice. No. This is just okay. Given everything you said. If you had to bet your like life savings in one of those three companies, which one would it be? It have to and it have to be just one, right? Just one, um, just Correct. one. No diversification. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I, I would say I, I really, I really, yeah. I mean, that's tough because here's why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here's yeah, why, yeah, yeah. right? Because yeah. I, I, you know, as you've said, I mean, you know, you don't want to bet up against Andy Florence, right? I mean, that's right. That's so, um, but Zillow, as I've always said, is kind of a cultural thing. I mean, it's something, it's almost a verb, right? I'm going right. to go, I'm going to go Zillow some stuff or whatever. Right? right. Um, but I tell you this, 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 the changes that have been made because of the NAR settlement are really, I think a bigger deal. I think Zillow realizes this, but I don't think everybody else realizes how big of a deal that these things are going to make as far as the, uh, what they wanted to accomplish with their, with their button and their, and their, okay. their, their showing time thing. Um, so there's a real, uh, there's a real. I think they have a real threat to them. Realtor.com is to me always is going to be a maybe an also ran. So I'm not sure if I, you know, to me it's still. I mean, so here's the what's funny about what you I just don't know, said. man. I, I, I'm not just trying to say this because I'm trying to be politically uh, maneuver. It is a tough question, right? I'm just saying what's funny about what you said is Realtor.com is currently number two, but you're calling them an also ran. Well, no, they're currently number three, actually, according to CoStar, right? Well, I, and this is why we had the, the battle because Realtor.com CEO is like, no, screw you, we're number two, right? Because <laughs> your numbers are cooked. I mean, that was the whole traffic war. Yeah, thing, but I, right? I don't, I don't think that the numbers are cooked. I think there's legitimately, um, I mean, I, I think there's, I mean, they they've spent a billion dollars. They're getting more traffic now. I mean, how they're reporting that? I mean, they've got to like settle that down because as, as more as more kind of fog that, you know, realtor puts mm-hmm. out there, people are going to buy that. Right. But, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see if they can kind of settle. Dupree's like saying there's, there's, he's, he's basically saying they have more traffic than realtor right now, but sure. they have been a little bit, uh, okay, so go back to non-consistent the with the numbers. Right. I know it's a hard question. If you had to pick one of the three to bet your life savings, which, which is it? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm just going to go, um, 
you know, with, uh, you know, it's so hard to beat the incumbents, man. So I, I would just probably say Zillow. I mean, right. I, I mean, just to be a, a just a, 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 you know, a, <laughs> you know, having no balls at all. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just tough, man. I mean, I think uh, even with the, with, I mean, they're just a smart group of people over there, right? I mean, yeah. um, they, they've got other flaws, but I mean, it's, you know, you can't, you yeah. can't, you can't argue that there's a smart group of people. So there. I go with Zillow for a really different, weird reason. Well, you okay. go with Zillow, but you've been pretty pro co-star for a long oh, time I mean, now, bro. Absolutely. But so the issue to, like we said, and, and I've been, think about my whole thesis around co-star though, right? When they entered residential real estate. It was because I thought CoStar th thinks that they could take over the MLS the way they have in commercial, right? So CoStar is the commercial real estate MLS. LoopNet is their commercial real estate Zillow, if you will, right? It's the, right. It's the largest portal. I think CoStar probably thought they could effectuate a similar thing in residential because of all the chaos, all the problems that would lead to MLS is going belly up, et cetera, which isn't yeah. going to happen now because of settlement. But I think that was my thesis behind them. Having said that, I mean, at this point, again, it's not about betting against Andy Florence, who I think is one of the great sort of entrepreneurial geniuses of, of, of this generation. Like, you know, to me, he's, uh, he's what? I think he went to his same year as uh, Jeff Bezos, right? Like mm. those guys in my mind are kind of the same. <laughs> like they're both... Fucking brilliant, dominant. Well, you know, would you put? I, I would put Rich right? Barton in that as well. I mean, would come put on, Rich Barton you know? in that as well. You know, it's just these these are these are giants, right? So I, it's not bet against any of those guys, right? It, but so for me, in a bizarre way, I actually simplified it to this: I think Zillow has the better brand because it's a nonsense brand. In other words, the other two, Realtor.com and Homes.com. Right. There's some advantage to having like a generic URL, right? Like homes.com, apartments.com. There is a benefit to it. The downside to it is it's much harder to become, to your point, like a cultural thing. It's much harder for that brand than to sort of acquire its own meaning, like a Xerox or Zillow. Right. 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 Yeah. So I think, and given that the fact that Zillow is the incumbent, you know, it appeared in like SNL sketches because everybody knows, oh, you know, Zillow, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we might actually be kind of close. Uh, we were anyway a couple of years ago. I don't know if we still are to Zillow becoming a verb like Google. Oh, I think it already is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, like we would, we wouldn't like, I don't even know how many people say even like, oh, just go search the internet instead of just saying, just Google it. Right. Right. I wonder with home search, are people saying like, go search a portal, or they just say, just go Zillow it. I think we're right. very close to that. Whereas no I one's going to say- I think it's more say, like, just go check Zillow. Just go check Zillow. Right. Just but, go Zillow. No, but no one is going to say, go homes it, or go realtor it. Do you know what I mean? Because right. they used a brand that's sort of more generic. So that's right. why if I'm betting my life you know, <laughs> savings, the, I'm I, going with a brand that's unique that could actually become a, ver a verb. Yeah. Right? I mean, there is like some other things that are on the horizon. And I don't know if you- we may have talked about this on the on the pod before, but there was a, a, a an article. It might have been in what is that Alpha First or whatever the hell um, Alpha sites. What? Yeah, maybe no. whatever. Uh, uh, seeking Alpha, maybe. You seeking Alpha? Yeah, yeah, maybe it was that. But these two guys that are shorting Zillow, right? Yeah, yeah. And the reason they gave is that is that the way that Zillow recognizes revenue, right? Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And this is pre. This is like. This is actually a gap ex accepted way is that yeah, yeah. they can say, hey, we already know what and we are very, you know, we can show you up and down why the commissions are going to be this much, which just means why our our referral money is going to be this much. And therefore, we can extrapolate and then tell you that we're going to recognize this revenue right now. That's right. That, because of the settlement, is going to be blown up, right? Sure. So that referral revenue, which again... Homes.com doesn't have to worry about, a realtor does on some level. Sure. That is going to have to be blown up and 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 Zillow now is going to have to change the way that they recognize revenue because sure. they cannot now say, well, commissions are always going to be this because of this lawsuit, right? So there's going to be an adjustment here probably. I don't know if it's going to be third quarter or fourth quarter where Zillow is going to have to say, well, the way we recognize revenue has changed because of this and therefore- 
they might have to report much. May, maybe it's recognizing revenue differently. Maybe it's a much lower number. Um, something's going to happen there that I think is going to apply some pressure to that stock. But um, yeah, I mean, we don't know yet, but I mean, yeah, I, we don't know I, I, I thought that was an interesting kind of uh, yep. headwind that they have to kind of deal with as well. Except that I, I figure those guys have likely, again, the Zillow people are very smart. Right. So they've been thinking about it since probably 2020. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm, I'm fairly certain that their CFO has a plan in place and they just need to follow it. Right. Just like, so we'll see. I mean, it's an interesting, interesting like aspect of the industry, right. That we haven't really talked about in, in quite some time because Zillow's dominance made it, you know, like who cares about Portal Wars? It's over. It's like, well, maybe not because well, co-stars here. The, the other thing we're just talking about now, the realtor.com homes thing, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened now, what Andy's is, uh, Andy Florence has been saying, it ain't, it ain't over it at realtor.com, right? He also states this article that he's not, they're not interested. They place their bet on, on homes.com. They're not interested mm -hmm. in kind of buying realtor.com, which right. I think, think makes sense. But right. um, now we have a situation where, Okay, so let's say that they're they're done. They they actually proved that they're number number two, and now he's got Zillow in his sights. That's where things get really interesting. How sure. do you, based upon the, kind of what you said, how do you upsurp that? How do you upsurp that in, uh, incumbent? Yeah. Right. So yeah. I, I think there's some more tricks up the sleeve that have to be kind of pulled. I I just don't see it happening, right? Um, and I I base that on just technology like internet history right like when's the last time we saw a dominant internet site of some kind lose to a newcomer well i mean if you want to go way back you can talk about alta vista you can talk about yahoo you can talk about a lot of I, things I, that I, fell the only to... one i could think of is google overtaking yahoo that's the only yeah. one i can think of because alta vista was never dominant yahoo was dominant right and then Google split off and they overtook Yahoo. It's yeah. the only one I could think of, right? I just, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember, you know, Sears and J.C. Penney, right? And you know, these kind of brands you would never, ever think of, like right. ever but they going were away. Offline brands, okay, but but again, I'm saying it's, in the internet world, right? Yeah. And the reason why the internet world is because internet tends to have companies that become monopolies. Like Google has ninety percent of, of uh, search traffic, right? For but, example, but, you know, but Google to me, everybody's talking about how um, you know, chat, uh, uh, open AI, sure, is a threat to Google. So what, right. you know, why do you want search results? You just want an answer, that's right? right. So that's that right. could change the whole kind of search game. So there's, you know, I, I don't think that that stuff is still up in the air that's here right. a little bit. So I think what I'm getting at is this: when we've seen things like that, to me, it's always been sort of a, a brand new technology, brand new platform that is dr drastically different than the incumbent. So in other words, if Go the, the threat to Google is not another search engine, right? like a website, you know, where you go and type in, like, I don't think it's that. I think it's maybe some open, maybe the new generation of a uh, chat GPT 4.0, you know, the voice control mm -hmm. AI, maybe it's that, right? Um, Another example that comes to mind is somebody's talking about YouTube. Like YouTube is so dominant, right? Yeah. And the thought was the challenge to YouTube, what's going to make YouTube, the threat to YouTube is not um, Rumble, uh, Trump's True Social. It's not those. It's TikTok. Right. Right, which is completely different. You know, it's uh, whatever, 30 second, you know. Well, it's, it's algorithm based, right? It's, it's all it's, algorithm it's, yeah, based, right? It's that, it's right? lean back instead of like so, active. So in other words, it's not like a direct competitor. It's like this weird orthogonal competitor. So when I look at homes, I'm saying, okay, you're going after Zillow using the exact same, it's a direct competitor instead of it being like an orthogonal competitor. That's all I'm getting at, right? Yeah. So again, I'm not taking nothing away from Andy, like nothing like that. The reason why I thought they were doing this orthogonal competition thing is I thought they would come in, do the homes, do whatever, but really it was about taking over the MLS below. If that's not the case anymore, then it's like, well, you're going to have to come out with something, right? Because I don't know if a direct head-to-head -head competition in the internet space really works. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Let's Can I pull that a little bit? Yeah, 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 please. You know, you've been talking about you know, and I, I think I've been saying a little bit the same is like that, that CoStar has, that they're, they're really going after the MLS. 
Do you think that this thing after, after the NAR settlement and seeing what, <laughs> you know, how NAR is involved and how all these different pieces yeah. or whatever, has that made, has that made, has that changed? I mean, if, if again, we, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're making guesses. That's what it was. Oh, but of course. If, but if you, if, if you were thinking before, okay, well, that's, that's the end game for is co-star to somehow kind of take over the, become the MLS for the country. Um, has all this NAR settlement kind of, would you think that would change their mind or, or give them even more um, gravitas to keep going? No, I, I think it's a big step back for co-star strategy. Mm. Right. Because again, when I when I came up with that idea, and, and this was just what back in 2019, yep. 2020, whenever they entered, I'm looking at these lawsuits like these lawsuits had the potential of bankrupting every MLS in the country. Yeah. Well, that's not gonna happen anymore because under the settlement, every MLS is now immune, right? Yeah. Even the non realtor MLS could just buy in, yep. you know, for a hundred bucks a member. So I think that was a big blow to if if Coaster had a strategy of taking over the MLSs, right? Having said that, you look at their biggest, the most recent acquisition, which is VHT, and uh, you know which owns uh, what's that three uh, the three D tour, right? Matterport, right? Matter Mater, God, I right? get it so, wrong all the time. I mean, we've and we've talked about it a lot, right? Which is look, uh, owning the photography, owning the copyrights to those things is really significant. They've made a very big play. You know, Zillow's gonna have to answer. That's not taking over the MLS, but again, it is orthogonal, right? In the sense that it's not about like throw up a website and get consumer traffic and then just go head to head with Zillow. Like, it's not that. It's throw that up because you need something, but the yeah. real competition is over here, right? Is you know, it's, it's something yeah. that's kind of out of the public eye. I mean, I, I could see that, right? Right, right. Um, but yeah, no, I think the NAR settlement is a step back for CoStar strategically from that standpoint. If their strategy was when these MLS get in financial trouble, we're going to come in and be a white knight, which was my original yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. thing that I well, wrote. Well, this is right? good. I like I like pulling on this because this is something I don't think we've talked about as far as that yeah. of that thought process there, which yeah. makes me think of also some of the predictions we've been making. Um and and that's have to do with uh, with member count for NAR, sure. right? Sure. Yeah. And from what I was reading, I think NAR has taken down the page. It used to be on their site that, you know, all of us would go to yeah, and it would go back, you know, 20 years or even more than that of like hundred years. Yeah. What would be the membership count that is gone now? Well, because so you, know, you can, yeah. Transparency. Well, I mean, okay. But here, here's the thing though. Um, <laughs> I think we all have our little birdies out there. Sure. Um, and I had a little birdie confirmed to me that, that now, I'm going to caveat this in a second, but I think, and I've seen the screenshot here, right? That they're, they're in the last, hold on, I'm just going to bring it up here just to make sure I'm, I'm saying the right thing. Okay. Here. Okay. Um, it's better be so huge, man, because right. everyone is expecting members numbers to drop. It's just when, right? Well, okay. So this is what so I'm going to say We have a steak here, dinner right? on this actually, you know, to be payable well, next I, year. Gonna, I'm going to have to like have this guy like, or gal, yeah. Uh, uh, see, uh, I was getting uh, to you there. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is uh, because all I'm getting right now is just there with their, and I'm seeing the numbers here. There has never been more people joining NAR than they are right now in the past oh, interesting. Okay. one, two, three, four months. Okay. The, the, the numbers are like, are, are crazy. Like, um, I mean, they're much higher than, than they have been historically. Right. So, okay. so it is, it is, it would be a very true statement that, that over the past four months of this year, um, NAR has had more new members, has added more new members than they ever have in their history. Sure. Okay. That's a, I think a bold statement. Now they, that's not saying net. Okay. What I've heard is they're still over 1.5, mm -hmm. right. Um, which means they are losing members, right? But but I thought it was interesting just to kind of add the context of sure. like they haven't been, you know, they, they've been adding uh, uh, historically more than they ha ever have, right? So, and that's just, so so that's a weird thing to me. Like we've talked about this in the pod before where traditionally, and this was, I think back on our 2020 days, it's like mm -hmm. you would see people come into real estate when the unemployment was, was low, right? Or, 
Unemployment was high. high, sorry. Yeah. And and that just got all wacky with COVID and everything else. And it, this, again, with, with unemployment being historically low, we're seeing more people become realtors than ever. Why is the case, right? So Because the unemployment numbers are fake. Okay, Jesus. All right, let's just not go full on conspiracy theory, okay. right? Um, I think it is, you know, and I'm, you know, talking with others, and, and this isn't all original to me, but I think it does make sense. Is that you know in 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 an economy now where it's all about the side hustle, yeah, right, the side gig. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of people, are, I mean, just view real estate as another side gig. You know, a side gig like they, they got a landing page up for multiple income streams, absolutely, and they're just going to get their license, right? So, absolutely. So let me ask you this question because you've been a big proponent of these kind of conversations. Um, you know, bad agents. Is this an influx of people, if, if we're going to take the premise that this membership is due, increase is due because of, you know, they're watching it, you know, they're watching fucking, you know, Bravo TV and mm -hmm. selling Sunset and, you know, Beverly Boulevard or some shit. Um, are these bad agents? Are they bad agents? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to use a word like that. Let, let's say that they are inexperienced yeah right i mean i think that's just true because so there's bad in two ways i think right there's bad in just straight up selfish unethical right yeah. like all they like they don't even see their clients as human beings they just see them as walking wallets right there's there's that type of bad right and there's bad where it's just it's not that right they're not evil they're not on it they're not greedy, selfish bastards, just they're bad in terms of they don't have any skills. They're not very smart. They're lazy. They're stupid. There's that level of bad. Or, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not even, uh, you know, in this case, it would be, they think, you know, they're getting a license because it's easy and it's cheap. Right. But right. they really, it's, it's one of many things they're doing. They're a jack right. of all trades, which means they're not really good at one thing, right? They but it's focused. what I mean is they don't care about housing. They don't really care about client service. They don't care about any of that. It's just, oh, it's just money, right? Now, they're not bad. Like, they're not evil. But they're not sitting there like, how oh, can I squeeze the most money out of this motherfucker? Like, that's not it. It's just, right. you know, they're not They're not studying. You know, they're not, they're, they're not going to take, you know, like, taking coaches. You know, they're, they're, that's, this is not their career. This is not their passion. Right. This right. is not their thing. It's just to your point, they drive Uber and they deliver whatever for DoorDash and then they do some real estate. You know, it's yeah, one of those. Right. Right. Exactly. That that's that's a different context, you know, that's a different type of bad, right? Than some of these like top producers we know of who are real, unethical, greedy, selfish motherfuckers who just, you know, there's that kind of bad. They're competent, they know what they're doing. They're just doing it against, you know, their client's interest. And I, I find it interesting you want to talk about this because I do want to sh uh, share something. All right, hold on. Let me see if I could pull this up. Uh, so this was what? The American Home Buyer Report, something called uh, List with Clever. And according to this survey, whoa. Uh, again, if you're just listening to audio, then you need to come to YouTube and check it out. What the survey says is, 54% of recent home buyers think their agent cared more about making a deal than their best interests. Hmm. Right? And given the nature of the industry, that's 54% of those agents, every single one of them was a realtor. Right. So, what do we think about that? Right? <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> so, you know, I mean, there's been a perception of that for a while now, though, right? Of I course. mean, I mean, but you know, there's other things where, you know, uh, well, what's the famous stat? Twelve, you know, ninety percent, eighty nine percent of of consumers would use the same agent again, but and, only twelve percent do, yeah, right, or right. something like that, right? Stuff like so, that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know where that kind of jives into this type of thing here. Right? Uh, all but, I'm um, saying is when it's it's this is like more than the majority. 54% of recent home buyers thought and think their agent cared more about making a deal than their best interest, which is yeah. shocking, right? If you are a realtor, if you are NAR, right? 
And in a bizarre way, this kind of goes back to that conversation we're having earlier about co-star Realtor and Zillow. If I'm News Corp, man, I'm like livid because my brand name is Realtor. <laughs> Right? I th- yeah, and fifty-four percent of consumers think realtors yeah, but are just I mean, greedy, selfish I, scumbags. I think, I think you know, the greedy real estate agent meme or cliche has been around before they got that. Damn Fine, but here's thing, the thing: right? the whole point of the realtor movement, the whole point of NAR, the whole point of realtor brand was that these individuals were not them. These well, individuals have code of ethics. Well, right? y- yes These and no. These individuals I mean, prioritize fiduciary duty. The whole point behind that brand was that they are not the greedy, selfish, well, you know, real estate agent. Me. Yes and no. I think. I think. I think. At, I think at the beginning that was it. But but just to go back to to call back something you said about Zillow and it being a a verb. Basically, Realtor became Kleenex. They became Skillsaw. They became uh, oh, the Crescent Reg. Right. Oh, so great. I know. So I think they lost. You know that differentiation. When they know. became. That's I know. what it just Realtor means. It is the name brand of a real estate agent. It is I not the agree. name brand of an association. Right? I completely so, agree, which yeah. then points to everything that you and I have been talking about, which is why NAR leadership is an utter failure um, and why the number one problem in the industry is you got to do something about this differentiation, right? And that's why we have things like area popping up, right? That's why there's this hunger among the 46%, right? <laughs> it's like, to me, the amazing thing is if only 54% of buyers thought that. But that, that's actually hopeful. That means that 46% of buyers thought that their agent cared more about their best interest than making money. Yeah, I'm and, like, and, yo, go for the 46% who did that. Right, Those people okay. should be carrying the realtor brand, not I, the 54%, I, I right? Think, I think there's there's this survey was done in a snapshot, a, a moment in time, right? Sure. And let's just say right now... Um. It is is a horrible time, as far as if you okay. want to buy a house, right? And in those kind of situations, it's a high pressure when you know your neighbor's got an interest rate of two and a half percent, and you know they only they paid thirty six percent less than you did two years ago, and you're paying close to seven percent and paying you know thirty six percent more. Sure, um, there might be some people, you know, just because of the macro environment, um. You know, you're throwing blame around to a lot of people, right? So maybe, maybe I would like to see over time this same kind of thing uh, in different markets to see what the sentiment of um of the real. Because hold on, hold on. So let's say you bought a house at a two and a half percent interest rate, you know, four years ago. You might be going, my realtor just fucking did a great job for me, man, because I got this at two percent. This is historically low, and blah 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 blah, right? So I'd like to, you know, I don't know if we can just take a look at this one snapshot and go. Okay. This is what, you know, there, there are, I think, other things that kind of, kind of factor into people, the way they feel about a purchase they made. Right. And, and, and some of it is, is that, that they might, they might want to pass on to the, the, the real estate agent, the, the, the salesperson or whoever is the personification of that kind of misery that, that they're feeling. Have I you mean, ever had a, uh, let, let me ask you something. Good times, bad times, you know, good economic times, bad economic times, deals that get blown up, deals that go through. Have you ever felt like your lawyer cared more about making a deal than your best interest? I don't know if that's a good comparison. I mean, I, it's no, not I'm like just I'm asking. Just, it's, I'm, Have you ever felt like your lawyer cared more about making a deal than for your best interest? I, I, again, uh, no, but I don't know if that's a good comparison. Why isn't it? Well, because there's not a, there's not a macro environment of like you know his legal fees were only a hundred dollars two years ago and now they're five hundred, right? And I right. know my other person, my my friend over there had you know legal fees at five hundred bucks and fine. And but now did you to- feel that your lawyer cared more about the deal? About making money than about you, I your think, best interest. Again, I, just, I I already answered the question. I'm just right. saying. So I, I'm you, arguing you with is there a, that it's is not there a good case example. You, is there a case where you felt like your doctor cared more about making money than for your health? Uh, God, I mean, because uh, there are I, doctors who do this, right? There are no, some no, no, no. Doctors. I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't experienced that, but I, I can definitely think that um, I would probably blame, you know. You know the medical system, sure. right? And sure. and 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 a, and a doctor is just having to deal with that. But you know, at sure. the same time, I mean, I hear these 
horrible stories of what happens in Canada too. So I'm glad I'm not there. Right. So, <laughs> but I guess my point is like, I get what you're saying about bad economic times, whatever. I don't think that reaches to the level of feeling like somebody cares more about me than about the deal. Right. Now, here's the thing. Conversely, I have never once met. But you know, but, but again, let you, me finish. Geez. I have never once met a car salesman that I thought cared more about what's in my best interest than in doing the deal. Not one time. Right. So, fact of the matter is, to me, again, the hopeful sign here is the 46%. Right. right? In this economic time with 8% interest rates, with, you know, sh things going to hell and, okay, it's, I don't know, you know, this was, uh, okay, hold on, 71% of, this was uh, people who purchased a home in 2023 and 2024, right? So this isn't, you know, before when interest rates are 3%. No, this These is are, shit right? times, yeah. Shit times, 46% of them still felt like their realtor, their agent cared more about what's in their best interest than about doing a deal. Again. That is a hopeful sign. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, sure. But I mean, again, just to say on the other side of that, right? Imagine this. It's like, um, yeah, Rob, I'm sorry. There was there was 17 offers here. And if you really want this, you're going to have to pay an extra $20,000 right. if you want to get this deal done. Um, I, it's not me. It's, you know, what's going on. Well, sure. I mean, you, I mean, I could be very pissed off and some of that pissed off can go directed to the agent sure. because- I don't want to pay this much. And I don't want to, I know what the interest rate is going to be and everything. Sure. I mean, I think there's, again, I, I think there's, you're, 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 you're minimizing that those factors in how a person feels about, you know, I don't the person, think I'm really that, the, person it. the person is basically the front, the tip of the spear to this happening. No, I get it. Right. But hey, man, who, we else just, are they supposed to, who else are they supposed to complain Greg, to? Right. We just talked about how, you know, NAR is getting the most new members because of the gig economy and people are doing DoorDash and That's Uber and I'm yeah. going to do real estate on the side. You think those people are like genuinely, I really care about this person and then a fiduciary. Like, do you think those people understand what fiduciary duty, do you think those people understand what the real code of ethics is really? Right. And then you look at the performance stats, the fact of the matter is like half of the people in a given MLS do zero transactions a year, right? If you take it to like, you know, one or two transactions where we're now at like 70, 80 percent of the MLS. Like, are we really saying those people like, oh, they're so they're they read the article, you know, the code of ethics all the time. And they're like, you know, my job is to really care for like, really, do we really believe that? Come on. Come on. My point is, I think the 46 percent is actually way higher than I would have expected, which says to me that even those people who aren't doing many deals, a lot of them are still motivated by the right things. Point is, this industry is filled with really good people, right. and I keep saying that this industry has some of the best people I've ever met. Like some of these men and women who are in the field, like in the trenches, helping families. They're some of the best people, right? And I've known people who like they really could have used the money from that deal. I know these people, right? Right. And they still like, yeah, I just can't recommend that you buy this house. This this is not the right house for you. I know people who do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that's. Kind of the best of the industry, right? My complaint forever has been: why isn't our, why aren't our institutions backing those people instead of going for fucking dues revenues from the fifty four percent, right? Who are clearly damaging the realtor brand, who are clearly damaging the real estate. I don't agent. know how. I, mean, I don't know how do you, you you suss that out. I mean, I don't know how do you call that? I mean, it's a. How do you I mean, call it? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it can be transactions. Right. I mean, if you live in some remote area and you only do two transactions a year, I don't know. I mean, mean, you know, we, we could start with a change in leadership. Well, I, mean, I, but, I, I think yeah. I think right now we have the worst class of leaders in like association history. And I say well, this we, we based on we, we basically but we just gutted everybody. Right. I mean, we have a temporary CEO. We have you know, some other people that have, have left, right? So it's like, it's a it's a transitionary period to be, to put it mildly. Okay, fine. I I, I don't know. Like, I, so I, I don't want to say I, they're worst. I mean, so, you know, the, the, the interim CEO hasn't been on the job more than a year. I mean, first I First of all, that interim CEO shouldn't have been hired in the first place, right? Because I, I, it's like, she's out there talking about this the way we do things in the industry. Like, well, you've been in the industry like 10 minutes. How the fuck would you know what we've been doing in the industry? You're from, you're from newspapers. Right. Uh, 
and we could complain about the CEO. I'm just saying at the CEO, the president level, like how many how many NAR presidents do we have to lose to scandal before we go, you know, maybe it's a problem with the leadership ranks. Like, I don't think I'm speaking, like, am I making shit up right now? The fact that <laughs> Anthony and motherfucking Lamaki is the broker liaison, like, we're going to talk about no. this is the leadership we have? I thought we were going to get through this now. whole podcast without saying the, that, that, that name. <laughs> so my, my point is simply, where's our William North, right? Like, you know, like, like I said, people want to make it like I hate realtors. Fuck you, man. I love realtors because I look at guys like William North and go, that's what this institution used to be about. Right. Those are the types of leaders we used to have. And I've known, like, you and I both know MLS CEOs. You and I both know local and state leaders who are like, why aren't you an AR president? Yeah. Why aren't you on the board? Why aren't you on the leadership? Because, God damn it, you are doing the right thing. You're the right type of leader. Why don't we have those people? Because something's fucked up over there. And in the meantime, the 46% of the agents who are doing the right thing, doing the right thing by their client, and giving the right impression, even in this tough economic times, even in this terrible market, their clients walk away going, my agent cared more about what's in my best interest than doing the deal. Support those people, man. Why the fuck? The 54%? They should be out. Uh, they should no longer. They should be out. They should be out. We're not doing any of that. Right. We're not doing any of that. Instead, what are we doing? Like, I don't know, man. You know? What are I we just, doing? I Spending think, I, $40 million a year on realtor brand advertising. Meanwhile, 50% of every realtors out there making clients feel like they don't give a shit about them. Like, maybe there's a failure somewhere. Is that fair? I mean, yeah. I, I just don't. I Again, things are much more complicated than I think, you know, we can perceive. Right. So it's, it's not just about putting the right person in there sometimes. I mean, how sure. do you, first I'm of all, let's decide how do we measure, you know, whether or not somebody, you know, it can't be transactions, but how are you going to measure who are the bad ones? Okay. I mean, how about we, we start with this? How about 98% of clients of realtors say my agent cared more about my best interest than doing the deal. No, that's fine. But I mean, you're saying get rid of the 50 whatever percent. How do you find, how do you find those things? And like everybody, like I've had good deals and bad deals, right? So just because you have one bad deal doesn't mean, you know, that your whole career is fucking locked. I, I, mean, I don't know, man. Look, shit the, happens. If we want to get to the details of policy, we can get into that. I just look at it this way. So again, there are some real scumbag lawyers. I get that. Okay. I'm just saying, though, when you look at the ethical rules of the legal profession, it's geared towards kicking you out. In other words, if you violate something, chances are they're going to try and disbar you. <laughs> right? In real this is world, coming from the guy that just told realtors all, all around the country to not participate in the uh, showing instruct the, the well, touring. I, yeah, event. I mean, you know, like I, what I said was, <laughs> please ask your own attorney. <laughs> my, my point is. It, it, maybe it's just a philosophical thing. We should err on the side of let's kick you out. Right? I would love to know, you know what? Here's a question. How many realtors get kicked out of their association, lose realtor status every year because of some violation or another? Yeah, that might be going up. It might be, but what, what do you think the number is? Small. Right? Why isn't it 30, 40%? I think it's just attrition, basically. <laughs> Here's the thing. What we have to recognize is there's an inst institutional incentive for headcount. Yes. We need to start there. We need to start there. So in other words, let's put it this way. Imagine that, and again, I understand the economics, the finance, like I get all that. But imagine if the MLS CEO or the association executive was incentivized not on how many produce paying members you have, but on this type of survey, what percent of our realtor members, their clients go, you know what? My my agent cared more about me than I'm doing the deal, right? If it falls below 80%, you're fired. If it's above 90%, you get a bonus. Don't you think we would like, right? Well, I mean, you could- A lot of change. Yeah, I mean, 
the other thing is I've, I've said this before. I mean, raise the fucking dues. I mean, make sure. it a thousand dollars a month. I mean, sure, whatever. Then, then you really have sure. to like, think about go to apprenticeships or, you know what, how about this? How about we reverse the 1976 decision that allowed individual agents to become realtors? Because before then only principal brokers could be realtors. Everybody else is an associate. Yeah, d- uh, we've talked about that before, like a desi- right. a different designation. Sure. Um, that, that there are so different whatever. ways of slicing and dicing this pie. My point is, I'm calling out the failure in leadership because the results of the last 10 years is like, it's fucking ridiculous. Everyone knows it. Everyone sees it. And instead of anyone doing anything about it, we get, you know, we get nonsense. Yeah. Right? So I, I didn't know that this was the direction this, <laughs> this <laughs> show was going to go in. And somehow <laughs> it ends up to the, some flavor of this a lot of times, so... Well, you know, you it's know, a passion. I, it's your, your passion. I mean, we're all passionate about this. And again, there's some solutions out there, but never, they're never easy. No, you know what it is? I, I think we probably need to do a whole show. Maybe, maybe we'll make a special event out of this. Fact of the matter is NAR is among the institutions in our society that are failing, <coughs> that are failing. And NAR is not some, you know, it's not some unique thing. Our universities are failing. Our government's failing, Right. Our banking system is failing. Churches are failing. Like all of our institutions are failing. And a lot of it is because we just have this. And everyone's like, what's well, so complicated? It's too complicated. We can't, we can't change this. We can't change that. There's a total lack of courage and leadership. And it's a failure of leadership. Right. And I do believe this. We have the worst leadership class in our country's history. Right. And it's not like NAR is some different thing. When you look at the, the membership level, when when you leave like the top leaders and you go to membership level, there are some really good people there. There really are, and and I say that about universities. I say that about every institution is failing. Right. right. Like even government. I, you know, I'm I'm an anarchist. I'm an anarcho capitalist. I hate. But if you go below like the top layers, like the FBI, there are some great people at the FBI who are trying to do the right thing. Somehow we have the worst leadership class in in American history, and this is just one part of it. And I'm just sitting here going, look, can we go back? Can we like look back a little bit to see where we want to go forward? I'm going to say this again. Where's our William North today? They're out there. right? You and I both know some people who, who are those types of people. They somehow need to be put into higher position leadership. Yeah, but we've made, it, we've made it so that, you know, some discretion you had when you were freaking 13 will come back and they'll just hammer you and your family and just make, I mean, it's Correct. just, it's a, Correct. it's a, it's a tough, Correct. tough Correct. thing. Yeah. Correct. So who knows what's going to happen? My point is this survey says a real negative thing, but I'm saying it's actually a positive in a way, right? I know the headline's going to be the 54%, you know, that screwed their clients or it gave the impression that they did. I'm like, look at the 46% where the client said my agent cared more about me than about the deal. Celebrate that. Somehow maximize that. And and I think a lot of these problems, we talked about like the settlement, the showings. I'm saying, you know what? If you get to the basics of agents who give a shit more about their client and what's in the client's best interest, they're not likely to get into these problems. The steering thing, the, all this stuff, a lot of it comes from the fact that we have some we have a we have a lot of people who really should not be in this industry who do things it, at the disadvantage of their own clients because they just want to make money they just want to get deals done right so we'll have to talk about that at some point i know we give all i mean offer it. solutions instead of instead of whatever but I, correct, I get that correct, May, correct. That, that's that's a little bit more thought correct, there for sure uh, correct so that needs to be a full show let's like hey some solutions to the the core problem of the industry and maybe that's not you and my job to do but maybe we could at least get some conversations going. Maybe we'll look at something like that. And I do need to apologize to our audience because I think last week we said we're going to talk about what happens when buyers are crappy. We'll have to defer to the next show because we both got on this topic. Yeah, because uh, no, it's. Uh, I mean, I wonder how bar, much baby. of those. I wonder how many <laughs> how many of those fifty plus percent were because of crappy buyers too, right? Yeah, so, that's an entirely yeah. possible thing. Yeah. So, all, all right. right, let's wrap there. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, Thank I you. will see you next time. Same bad channel. <laughs>
make you think that they invented all the algorithms and start charging you thousands of dollars every month. You don't want to do that. Second option is to do it yourself. Well, that means you got to learn SEO, SEM, copywriting, marketing techniques on the web. Ugh, you should be really focusing on your own product. But now there's a third option. It's called content in a box. Give Two Brothers Creative 30 minutes a week and they'll handle everything. Plus, they'll show you how to bring it in-house later on. They'll rebuild your marketing foundation and give you tools and techniques and a new marketing playbook that'll actually produce real results and help you grow your business. Two Brothers Creative will give you the confidence and know-how to tell the SEOs and SEMs and all those other acronyms to get fucked. You're in control now. Get started today at thecontentbox.com.